Namaste. Hello, Ganj. Well, you might be thinking, like, who the heck is this guy? <laughs> you know, I look like a rock star. I was mistaken outside, like, are you a, you know, Kiran or something? And I said, no. Well, you know, TED means a lot to me. I was the first Nepali to attend a TED conference in 2009 in Africa. And from then, uh, I have been attending all the TED conference. I missed three. Uh, this year because I've been back and uh, we were also one of the founding members of TEDx to bring in Asia. We started that in, in Tokyo in Japan, then myself I was a Texas TEDx founder in Sapporo in Japan. So, uh, you know, this means a lot. It's an amazing community. It's an amazing tribe, you know, who are change makers, who are crazy and, you know, they can do anything. You know, they are courageous, beautiful community. I thank the whole TEDx Birgans team, you know, bringing this TEDx here in Nepal and in Birganj. And this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like, um, I'm all the time with computers and this, you know. Uh, you might be asking me, who am I? I'm an elite. I'm an elite. But, you know, I keep my profile low. I keep my mouth shut. I'm an introvert. And it's because I have so many data that many people don't want to hear. Many people don't want to listen sometimes in context of Nepal. So basically, I research big data and tackle the solutions dependently. You know, I'm against the idea of team management and doing the project with lots of cook who spoils the broth. You know, so that's me. <laughs> so, you know, after 22 years of data journalism overseas, uh, I came to Nepal three years ago. And uh, I have to tell you, this is my first days in Nepal. And it's because of TEDx. Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, like, uh, I was I'm fascinated about Japan. You know, I ended up there somehow, and uh, I'm a Nepali. Like many of you, I truly love Nepal. And like many of you, when we went to the transition from untouchables, superstitions, hatred and violence, the civil war, the democracy, and the new constitution today. I'm here today to, you know, share some positive news because I all the time share negative news, <laughs> you know. Today I want to share some positive news, you know, and share some small ideas, but has big pictures that we need to work on immediately in the context of Nepal. Nepal is not gonna be like this. We have so many country, you know, worrying about us. We have so many country wanting to see us doing better. And I feel that is our responsibility. So today I will talk about the big data and open government. So when I talk about big data and my independent movement, I have done mostly everything. I'm a philanthropist. I'm a social entrepreneur. You know, I'm a data catalyst. I'm a critics, creative data collector or whatever you say to me. But I do it independently. You know why in Nepal? Because you know, um, I feel that we have the lack of that unity. But it's amazing to see that here, the environment in Birganj, lots of youth willing to share ideas, bring them together, and dream about the big picture, how can we make a social impact. This is amazing. So, data, I will tell you, I will start with one of my story. It was late 2009, and uh, HIV and AIDS was in a very rapid, like rapidly increasing in Nepal. We were in the transition of civil war. Our political term was very bad. And I was lucky to get a subsidy from a Japanese company. So what I did was, you know, I rescued 10 women from Delhi. And I took them to Nepal, which is not good, bringing HIV back home. But the sole purpose was to track the group of women 
how is the transmitting disease affecting our lives? So, this didn't happen in a day. Of course, there were funders helping me. There were people supporting me. People were worrying about me. But, you know, that is why I say a critics data catalyst. So what I was doing was that, you know, in late uh, 2009, we had lots of excellent, like, technology helping us. We had GPS. We can track people's lives. We can track telephone calls. We can track where they work, what they eat, where they go, and where do they go to the restroom. You know, it was very easy. So what I did was, you know, we t uh, with the help of the AIDS Center in Kathmandu, I was tracking the 10 girls for the last 10 years. And I come there every year visiting them and asking them. And I was also cooperating with the organizations to facilitate the medicines, to give them proper care. And where are they working? You know, I never had that idea with other organizations, bringing them back to Nepal and uniting with the family and the project was over. No, that is not what the project means to me. Project is not about finalizing. The project has to have the deeper impact for the coming generation. Luckily, after 10 years, last year, we found that 10 group of women working in Kathmandu in the same profession without affecting any people with their diseases. That is possible and that is amazing. And if you want to know me in the details how I do it, I'll talk to you later. So this is the data I would like to uh, share with you. This is a very good data. I mean, the last 10 years, the life expectancy has increased. You see, we were almost living like 50 and a bit. But now we are living until 70. Look at the education. We were below 20% in 2000. Now we are 60% we are literate here in Nepal. And look at the mobile technologies. Everybody is taking selfies. Everybody is using the effects. Everybody is having open communication. And our GDP is increasing. It was 0 0.5 10 years back. Today we are almost to the 5%. This is this shows that Nepal is recovering from the darkest days. Can we go to the next slide, please? So Nepal has made a notable socioeconomic process in recent years. Literacy rates have increased, property rates have declined, and gender disparities have narrowed. And social inclusions have improved. It has improved. So those of you who think Nepal is developed, not developing, that is wrong. We are developing, but behind the curtain. What we need to look is the data. What data means to us? What country means to us? Can we go to the next slide, please? Can we move? So, was that uh, 10 years of development, 10 years of progress and made in a day? No. There were lots of, you know, dedicated people doing deep study in behavior for the better performance. And that is made happen because of the open data. Can we go to the next slide? So, we have lots of data now in Nepal. You know, we spend lots of time on Facebook, we used to spend lots of time on, I mean, they are amazing things. But, but I think we as a responsible citizens, we need to, we need to know, we have the right to know our data of our country. How are things happening? We have a reconstruction loss of seven billion. Seven billion of economic finances has gone to waste and we have millions of fund flowing in our country how do we implement that is that left to the government no it's not left to the government you know this has been a culture in nepal i'm very sorry to tell you know we like political turmoils you know rashtrabad uh, it's not only a nationalism is not only about burning flags and books hello it's about what can you do, what kind of information you have, how can you prove it wrong, and how can you prove it right. Of course, we have like the literacy rate, like more of half of the population in Nepal cannot read and write today, but there are people who can take the responsibility. Let's go to the next slide, please. 
Okay, please wait. Oops. Yeah, just press the next button, please. Just, pr just press the next button. It's not working? All right. Uh, the extreme poverty, like, you know, Nepal has that status of the least developing country in the world. And we have extreme poverty. But, you know, this extreme poverty has decreased. Our extreme poverty is just 25% now. Next one, please. And massive migration. Five million people are working overseas. Like, I lived in Japan for a long time. There are 60,000 people already living in Japan. This is, this is sad. I mean, but how are you going to implement the infrastructure if you bring five million people to our country? It's going to be a big trouble. You know, it's not only about complaining the labor migration. Are you able to give jobs? How are you going to implement them? And are you really going to collect the revenue that will connect to our country? So we need data for us to reduce the massive migration too. And infrastructure and economy and growth. <laughs> You know, it's a very, very difficult issue, but we've been doing great. Uh, we need that positive energy. Nepal is moving forward. Nepal is rising. And I prove today that Nepal is doing better in some circumstances to other countries, like if it's Afghanistan or Pakistan. We are even doing better than Bangladesh. We are even doing better than Sri Lanka. You know, this has been possible in the last 10 years. But we need more. You know, I will end up with a very simple idea. I don't want to keep my car talk too long because, you know, nobody wa will watch it on YouTube later. So we, <laughs> we need more. And when, when I need, I say more, we need a bigger picture. We need people. Next slide, please. We need people who are committed to make reforms. And is that the government? If you are just pointing, your f pointing the fingers to Dahalji or Oliji, you know, I think it's too, uh, nonsense for me. <laughs> you know, we are the committed reformers. We need to be, we need to be open. We need to ask government. We need to be contributing to the government, uh, to the government to be make it more open and more accountable. So we have the access and we have the right knowledge. And when it comes to openness in global data, 30% of the global data, oh, the data in Nepal is open. It's accessed on internet. Go to Google. Oh my God. Google says everything. The other day, I was uh, I asked, how did the polity, how did the civil war uh, ended up in Nepal? And somebody wrote, uh, well, Maoist they were guerrillas and they went to India and India helped them to to have the prestige and now they are in the government. <laughs> you know, that is not. That is not we can believe. We need to have a refined data. We need to go in details, and we need to be aware of digital literacy. And I would like to add, the world has witnessed three levels of industrial revolution. The steam, the combustion engine era, and the latest electronic revolution. But now, we are talking about the fourth revolution. That is technology advancement. We need that today. And to work on the digital literacy, to progress on this front, huge investment should continue to be made in the education sector immediately. We need to make huge investment. The data proves that we need to make huge investment to the people of Nepal who are below 25 and less and to the primary level immediately. We need to work on education sector and education is the key to the development of Nepal. And next one please. And um, now, you know, when it comes to economy, we are practicing microeconomy in Nepal because our economy is centralized. Like Jasar said, 
like you know, we are based in Kathmandu, everything is going to Kathmandu, Mopani Pokara Kuketa, oh, Nakabandi Boy, and if it is Taura Poundi Pound in a Pokara Mopani. You know, you know, we belong to Birgans, we belong to Nepal. You know, this is very, very important. And how do we raise per capita income? This is a very tricky issue. But I have an idea. You know, we have two emerging nations, India and China. You know, it is a very simple calculation. There are two stones overheated. How come the middle stone is cold? It's impossible. But we are asking this to our government. We are asking them to build for us. And I have to tell you, they are doing their you know, they gave us the constitution at least. Yay! <laughs> so, you know, we have to change the economy flow from the microeconomics to the macroeconomics. We have to collect data. So today I'm talking about data and digital literacy. Next one, please. So, the idea is let's become a responsible citizen. Let's tag that. Please tag somebody. I'm a good citizen. I want the movement to be started from today. Our future of Nepal starts from here, from your chair, from your table. It starts from home. And we have that word, political, begins from home. It's never made by others. We have to make it our own. We have to be more responsible. When it comes to work, when it comes to fulfilling something, when it comes to gratitude, when it comes to compassion or whatever, we need to be responsible for our country, for our children, and the future of Nepal. So, if we become a responsible citizen, and if we have enough digital literacy, and if we are able to explore the opportunities of Nepal, if we are able to track every development issues, if we are able to track things, we find there is a brighter future. There are loads of them, I tell you. This is my third year, and I'm doing OK. This is our country, and this is our responsibility. Like Martin Luther King said, it's not about what country does for you, what we can do for our country. And I will end up with the Nepali poem because I was inspired by her. Saparne banda bigarne ko kura thulo. Jitne manse chupa cha harne manse ko kura thulo. Maya garne hai na marne ko kura thulo. This is, we have to change this. Rastrabad bane ko, Rastrabad huna lai desh balye huna parcha, desh balye huna, janta balye huna parcha. Rajanta Bolio Huna, Arctic Sambridi Thank you so much.